order is about 9.22 or 9.22, 1.22 in the afternoon on Monday, September 15th. I apologize. It's my fault for being late. I came from another meeting late. But when I got here, I also learned uh, that Todd Hembry, our attorney, who is critical to the line-by-line -line discussion on the legislation, will not be in attendance today and does not have anything for us. So uh, in lieu of that, we will have a discussion and Q&A with Ms. Diane Kelly and John Oberacker concerning making the question of making Tarot an independent commission outside um, of our branches of government. So before we go forward, um, Bill John, would you care to give us our invocation? Our gracious Heavenly Father, let's thank you for this day that we can come together and do your service for the people of charities and uh, guide and direct each of us so that we make good decisions and uh, give each and every one traveling grace as we leave this meeting and home this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Councilman Baker. <laughs> Madam Secretary, would you do a roll call, please? Tara Kellan-Watts. Uh -huh. Bill England? Here. Bill John Baker? Here. Harley Bezer? Joe Crittenden? Here. Jody Fishinghop? Here. Jeanette Fulbright? Here. Don Garvin? Tyler Glory Jordan? Susan. David Thornton? We have a form. And we have a form. Thank you, Madam Secretary. So um, we do have meetings from the last, um, we have minutes from the last meeting to approve. No? Oh, yes. But was there any, did everybody have a chance to review them? There wasn't any comment in executive and finance, but make sure and as our subcommittee, look at those before they're approved. So there's no minutes to approve. Uh, before, you know, as Diane, I don't know if you want to get up first or if you want both of you and John, but I think the questions or discussion should ensue about making an independent commission. In, in lines of this discussion, I went out on the internet and found several tarot offices from other tribes. And so I'll pass that out for folks to kind of have some other options to consider about how other tribal communities might be doing their tarot. So who has the first question about what we would need to consider Well, I have, I have a, my, my first question would be, do other tribes have independent commissions and what do they look like? And do you need a chair? Do you want to just sit down at the table with us, Diane? Yes, please. Um, Madam Chair, originally, whenever the tarot was started, <coughs> it was started based on uh, the Fort Hall um, and the Navajo uh, Commission, and it was a commission, mm -hmm. and there was uh, people appointed to it as a commission. Uh, some were along the line, and I'm not really sure where, and it may have been through um, our tribal acts or laws or whatever. Uh, because we're not a reservation and we don't have the land base, because all of these, most, all of the tarot's in the United States are reservations of tribes. The ones in Oklahoma got exempt because the whole state of Oklahoma is considered a reservation on the old uh, statute of the Supreme Court law docket. That's why when you see federal regulations, it'll say tribes in and around uh, Alaska, Oklahoma, because they're still considered reservation states, but you don't actually have a land base. The only one that actually has land base is the Osages that actually has a reservation land base. We have some lands, but it's sporadic that you have uh, jurisdiction on. Other than that, uh, the law did not apply from an EELC because we had the Native American Rights Fund who uh, used Jeannie Whiting to defend us with the uh, administrative law judge hearing on that. And that's why they went on ahead and said that you would need to revert back because you're not actually a reservation. You don't have the land base. That's why it went back from commission to committee because the Cherokee Nation's uh, 
policy at that time was standing committees, and that's why it went regarded back. So I just wanted to give you a little history on that. Okay, so the, your, that story indicates to me that there is a legal precedence which prevents us from becoming a commission? There was at the time. I don't know exactly what, why it came up because we had to go and defend it to the administrative law judge, and we had to defend it to the Department of Interior, the solicitor's office, and we had to change it back from commission to committee because our laws said that we have standing committees, and we don't actually have a reservation land base. Can you, do we still have that historical documentation somewhere? I have no idea. All I know is that I had to go walk it through the Department of Interior when we got our EOC funding. Um, is that something that can, I mean, what would it take to research to find out what that, that, because apparently it's still out there. I can there. check with, uh, or do we just need to ask? I can check with John Applehawk and see if they still have it. Because the Native American Rights Fund is the one who did that for us. Okay, I, I would appreciate um, if your office would bring that back to us, and if possible, if we could have that documentation prior to next month's meeting. If I can get it. Yes, yeah, or just give it. us an update that it's still being searched for. But we had we had people appointed. Um, in fact, I might have a picture of the first group that was the the commission, and then it changed back. Okay. And when it was an independent commission, how many people were seated on that commission? Uh, and was that all appointed by the chief and confirmed by the council, or was there was three weeks? at large and two from the council? How were the three at large done? Uh, they were selected by recommended uh, through the chief's office and brought before the council. The two council members that sat on that were Stan Hummingbird and Ron Qualls. That's how far back it's been. Okay, so it was two council members and then three actual citizens. Yeah. And Jim McGee was one of them, and uh, trying to remember who the other two were. Uh, Eamon Baker may have been one of them. I'm not sure, but there was another one. I have to go back and see if I can look in my archives and see if I can find it. Mm -hmm. So if we set it up as an independent commission, what additional cost would we then incur for? What is this independent commission going to do? It implement tarot law, whatever comes out of this, out of the council. So there's been some things that are kind of to strengthen what we think is strengthening. I'll say that. Okay. Uh, which would be more activities um, potentially, which would be an additional cost, whether it's under a commission or under uh, administration. And while she's pondering that, what we're asking, Mr. Henry could not be here today, so we're not going to go line by line because we don't have our lawyer here to assist us. But so what we're doing is we're talking about what it would take to make Tarot an independent commission, and we're asking questions of Diane and John to, so that they can bring back answers if they don't have it on for next month. That's what we're doing. Madam Chair, Diane, and I probably should know this, but tell us, uh, and you may have already told it, how is it set up now? Is it, is it through, uh, okay. through the administration, and do you have council members on your tarot? I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna be honest with you and tell you how it got set up. <clears throat> I was sitting on the Department of Labor Rules and Regulations work group in Washington, D.C., there was 10 of us that was selected. I was the representative from Oklahoma. <coughs> there was a guy by the name of John Smith who was with the Shoshone Bannock tribe who was part of that work group. And this was with the Department of Interior and Department of Labor. And one of the things that he asked for was to put provisions in the employment training regulations to allow you to go in and pull out dollars from employment training to supplement staff who were actually working in the tarot program. And at that particular time, tarot was real new. It was back in the early 80s. And what we did is we carved out monies where you could take a proportionate share of your employment training dollars and you could pick up some of the salaries for those tarot people because it was in line with jobs, was recruiting jobs and putting people to work. And uh, when we got back, we sat down with Ross. He was the chief at the time, and we talked to him about it, and we asked him about uh, seeing if we could look at doing that. 
but at the same time, you had to get EEOC funding because tribes have a little bit of leeway with civil rights because you can mandate Indian preference. Tribes have that purview to do that. So with that, we asked him if we could uh, get with Jim Wilcox and, and develop something that would apply to us so that we could do the same thing. We didn't have construction going on at that time. We weren't building anything. What we were interested in was going after those federal contracts, which was these road projects, these bridge projects, all in the 14 County area, because they are mandated to hire women and minorities on those bridge and road projects. And that's what we were looking at at the time. And we wanted to establish that. And I remember, and you can probably go back to your, your minutes, Ross told the council at that time, he said, this is going to be one of the more controversial pieces of legislation that you as a council will pass because he said what that does, it's opening the door for us to go back and uh, look at the way we've been dealing with Indian preference. Because at that particular time, if you remember the old housing authority uh, back in those days, I would say that probably half of their administrative team wasn't even Indian running the housing authority. And when you looked at all the other entities, Indian preference wasn't even being looked at. So when the, when we passed that legislation, then it uh, told everybody to go back and look at the regulations where Indian preference prevailed. And it prevails in every piece of language that we have where we get federal dollars because we get it because we're an Indian tribe. And basically what they were looking at was that we could work with people outside of the tribe who felt like they were being discriminated against and we would actually serve as a mentor for EEOC. We got like forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 to do that. And then uh, with that, we started uh, certifying Indian-owned businesses. And that's how that came about. As far as getting into personnel issues, we were not the personnel people. We didn't get involved in that. And that wasn't the intent. Our intent was to work primarily with anything that we were doing internally, whether it be construction, road projects, uh, where we could get people jobs. That's what, what the intent was at that time. And that's how Carol got started on these reservations, was all these coal mining uh, companies that was pulling coal and bore off the reservations. They were getting fees for those people coming in and on, and they wanted to ensure that they were hiring Indians from the reservation. Councilman Bezzer, did you have additional questions? Um, I guess in your opinion, Brian, how does it, um, do you feel like the tarot department has enough, uh, and, and it's tough to put you on the spot, I guess, but do you feel like you have enough uh, backing to back you up when you make those decisions uh, to do tarot out on these uh, construction projects now? On the, <clears throat> on the construction projects? I mean, who? Uh, yes, huh? Well, yes and no. Our, our, our job is not to go in and deal from a personnel standpoint. It's to uh, be there with those bids, to know what the bids are, what they actually, the contractor says they'll mm -hmm. deliver. Then that's what we're basically monitoring. And if they can't deliver, then we're actually going out there and finding them. And I think that it's been a learning curve for CNE and CNI. CNE uh, has probably done a little bit better job because we are at there at the table. CNI is still new for them because they've changed uh, CEOs. But they're, I mean, their their stuff is a little different than ours. And from the tribal government, it's even different than the businesses itself. But you've got all the federal regulations that they're trying to mandate. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Buzzer. Did other folks have questions? Yes, Councilman Anglin. Ms. Kelly, and, and this may be maybe the same question that uh, Councilman uh, Buzzer just asked you, but do you, do you ever feel hamstrung by uh, if you guys go out and monitor a job that you may uh, have any? Uh, Repercussions from the administration if you're trying to enforce the law, the tariff law, or anything, or do you you feel like an independent uh, committee would do? Neil, I can truthfully tell you that in in no uncertain terms has Chad called me down there and said to the contrary. In fact, he's told us to do our jobs, and if we uh, feel like that things aren't being done, that we need to set up a meeting with the players, which would be David Stewart. Sean Slate and whoever and get it resolved. And if you can't get it resolved at that level, then let me know and I'll get involved. 
But other than that, we haven't had any problems that I'm aware of. My staff have gone out there to do the monitoring. And uh, we don't get involved in personnel issues, though. See, we, that's not our job. There is an administrative uh, um, law group that works with personnel issues. If someone wants to file a grievance or if they want to uh, go before the administrative appeals, they can. And then from there, they go on to the JAT. I mean, that's been put in place for any employee. We don't get involved in that. Uh, you have to bear in mind that as far as construction, when you came on board back, what, in the late 90s? Early 90s. Early 90s. We had only been doing some construction here at the nation probably about, it was about the mid-80s when we started doing construction. We haven't been doing that much construction until the last eight or nine years. And, there, and it's like I told John, I said, John, there's going to be some years that we probably won't be doing anything because things will have to go before uh, federal agencies and it may take a year or two. And there may be some years that we may have three or four projects going on, but we may not have anything going on some years. And it's just been in the last two council terms that we've actually had construction going on that we've actually monitored. The bulk of our monitoring has been outside the scope of Cherokee Nation with federal contracts, highway and bridge work. That's all, thank you. If I had a question, if nobody else had a question. So what about the fees that we collect and stuff? How might we better utilize, um, or not better, because I think you're doing a great job with, with what you've done. But how can we use those fees to get more people trained? Is there some opportunities? Are we Did we not put a mechanism in the law that would allow you guys to cover the overhead to do that and we need more staff? or Because there was a large unspent balance, I think. Kara, at some point in time, and I don't know if it was with this group or if it was the previous council, uh, there was some discussion about the fees and about us using that for training for the clients and we've tried not to use any of it for uh, salaries for any of the staff although we have had to contract with teachers to teach some of our training programs we've had blueprint reading we've had security guard training um, help me John what preaching else? and shoring um, we're looking at doing an OSHA 10 class right now an OSHA 30 class mm -hmm. We're because getting ready to do some training. Excuse me. We're getting ready to do some training over at Indian Capital in Ader County for uh, food and beverage because they've got so many people that they're going to hire at the casino at West Salem that they need some training, and we're going to open the doors for day and evening training over there for that to help with trying to recruit. So once they go through that training program, then we're hoping that they'll be the first ones to be looked at over anybody else coming in outside the the realm of the door because we want those people that have had some training to get the jobs and that's what we're doing is trying to offer where those jobs are actually going to be and that's why we did the security guard because they have a lot of security guard positions that will come open up there once they get that up and running so do we just not have enough people that need to be trained that we have a large unspent amount or I mean it sounds like you've been very creative in, in getting different types of training and utilization of the funds through contracting yeah, we, uh, we started collecting the funds about two years ago, about two years ago, and uh, we actually started the training this just last year uh, because uh, we wanted to look at what our, our businesses needed people for because we wanted to be able to get their foot in the door through our own businesses first. So we were asking them to give us ideas on things where we needed the training. And then some of our uh, tarot contractors said that they would like blueprint reading, uh, the trench work, uh, the OSHA. So those were recommendations that they have given us, and that's where John and, John and them are trying to get the training set up. Uh, I think that for the last year, we have developed training. We could probably do a lot more. Um, part of it is we're trying to go through the state vote tag so that they can get cert certificates through the state so that if we don't hire them, they could get hired at other casinos or other places. So that's why we were working through the State Department of Votech. And part of it is space uh, because the Votechs are geared toward 11th and 12th graders. And they have to find a room or they have to locate a place to do this. And that's what we're working through Ader County on because they didn't have a uh, 
teacher, and they had to get the curriculum through the State Department, and they're coming over to visit with us. We're going up to continue tomorrow to visit with them on what specifically that they're going to be looking for as far as the food service, banquet serving, and stuff like that, so that they can make sure that's incorporated into the curriculum that they've got. Yes, Councilman Buzzer. I don't know. This is probably not a question, Ms. Kelly, but maybe more or less of a comment to you and John and the rest of the council members here. And I've and I brought this up before. It's with jobs like uh, West Island Springs, Catoosa, we got Roland, Roland Travel Plaza, other jobs that's going on, road, road jobs and things like that. Uh, it seems to me like that, uh, and I know that John and we're covering the uh, construction projects as much as they can, but, but those magnitudes uh, of prices of the jobs, I, I think we really need somebody out there eight hours a day. And, and I'll tell you the reason why, because those contractors, Flintco, oh, they're always in there talking about what's going to happen next, what's going to be doing next week, tomorrow. Then you've got guys coming up there from Adair County, and Jay, or Tulsa, or Broken Air that are looking for a job, and if we had a person right there on the site, they could take that person's name and actually help that person right now instead of, uh, you know, either coming back to tell us while look at the job back. Uh, it just seemed with, with a $100, $100 million contract that we need somebody in Terrell every day, eight hours a day on those jobs. I know it's hard to do with the amount of people we got, because you got Katusa, and you got West Island Springs, you had Roland, Roland Truck Plaza, and other places going on, and I'm just thinking we're losing out on some of the meetings that those uh, contractors in Flintco are having up there. Uh, I know they tell you we're going to schedule a meeting, but I, I just think, you know, with the million dollars we're going to invest up there, we should be up there every stinking day watching what goes on. And, you know, if you need money to, to fund those positions, you know, and I just heard the Ms. Cowan talked about, you know, those other positions while ago, or the uh, training money, you know. I'd like to really see that happen where we've got somebody on site all the time. Especially for those uh, those types of jobs. Those are million-dollar jobs. Okay. Just afraid, I'm just afraid we're missing out on some people if we don't uh, have somebody there eight hours a day. I don't have any problems taking some of that money and doing that. But I wanted to make sure that you all don't have a problem because I don't want to come back and get well, I think the main thing is seeing in and, in and employment, you know, and if we're missing out on some of those up there and not telling those subcontractors, hey, mm -hmm. you know, you need to hire the Indian folks, the Cherokee people in here. Uh, I was in a meeting this morning and heard some of them talk, and those are pretty, mm -hmm. when our terror people talk to those people, they listen. And if we're not there, tell them, you know, they're, they just, oh, well, we're supposed to, but we've got somebody there to tell them, you know, they, and they take heed of what you're saying. But anyway, I think they're saying that. Uh, Thank you. And, and before Councilman Anglin, it, so, but I remember from the law, we specify that it can only be used for training, and I think that's what the contingency, it's on ours that we haven't, um, unless there's a way to create that as a training opportunity, we've prevented her from using those funds to do that. So are you saying if we if we created a training position up there, then they could use that as training to train to train the peril officer there? No, it's supposed to be for tra direct training services. For, the way I remember it, we were very specific that that money could only be used in the legislation yeah. to train individuals to in order to get the job. Like if they came in and said they weren't qualified to sheetrock, that we would get them the course at wherever to sheetrock, for example. Yeah, no, so, it had to be a fine line, you know, if you send somebody for a train on the job. I, I don't have an issue with it. I think it's just down the road. But Councilman Anglin was next, and then Mr. Overacker. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Kelly, at one time, did we not have a full-time Terrell person at Catoosa when we first started that project uh, four or five years ago? Uh, what, did we have somebody staged up there, a, a Terrell representative? Because... I was thinking that cured a lot of our problems when we had somebody up there. And, and Councilman Bowden just said that I, I thought a lot of we had that same person up there all the time. Uh, not not Leroy, but... Uh, mm -mm. There's been someone from here driving up there every day. Well, I was thinking we had an office up there that, that kept There was an, an eye office on, like, inside the Flintco uh, trailer. And uh, we had staff that were up there, but they weren't up there every day. 
they might have been off and on when there was a bid, bid process going up or they were checking in there, but not on an everyday basis. We had several other projects going on, but it would have been either Leroy or Dale. Or, or if, if it was far back as when Don was there, it could have been Willard or Paul Washington. Yeah, no, it wasn't that far back as them. But like Councilor Buzzard said, I, I think the only way you're going to correct me is we got to have somebody with these multi-million dollar jobs going on site. We need a representative there from Terrell every day keeping an eye on all the 15, 20, 30 subs there is on a project like that. Okay. I mean, I don't know how you do it, but I mean, that would just be my thought. And, and what I heard them saying and what I also assumed was when we have this big of a job going, that that is an opportunity for influx of money into our economy, especially through jobs and retention and training. And so I'd assume that there was also people on site throughout those projects every day from Tarot. Yeah, is it in our state or five days a week? They're there, they're there how often? At least three or four times a week. They, they, uh, no one can enter the job site unless they come to the Plinko office to, to make sure that we're getting copies of their, their Indian card, their citizen cards, and, and everything else. And they do call the Terrell office on that. Again, I know, again, approximately 45 people that were put on from January till now at the Siloam Springs project that we actually set up there ourselves. And that's not including the people that we would send one person up and they may bring two or three people with them and these contractors would hire them. Uh, the biggest obstacle we, we have had is is transportation with, with these with, with everyone that's employed there that we've gotten there from if their car breaks down the following week, if you're there riding with someone and his car breaks down or her car breaks down, you can't go to work. So instead of missing one employee, they're missing two, three, sometimes four of riding together in one vehicle. That, that has been a hindrance to us on several occasions. That's always happened. Yes, that's always happened. And, and at the Catoosa, we do have people coming in at the Catoosa Career Services Office with Cheryl there, and she does refer them to us, and, and Leroy meets them up there the next day because Plinko will hire them. And we do look at other people to try to hire them. Uh, it is tough to find people around Catoosa. No one here in Tahlequah wants to drive to Catoosa. Not that I have found. Uh, I have tried. Every, every, everyone wants to go to work at Siloam because it's close. It's 10 minutes further to Catoosa. That's it. 10 minutes. It takes 52 minutes from, from the from the complex to get to the casino. If you take a turn by, it's an hour and 15 to go the other way. But but still, we our biggest thing is we're trying to get people. When we, when we go to the community meetings, we try to get people to go to Catoosa. They're always looking for people to come to Catoosa. And that's been our biggest obstacle is actually putting people in place there. Okay. I Councilman Buzzer has his hand raised. Yeah, and, and just to comment on what uh, John just said, you know, if you got a person looking for a job that day, if we had a recruiter there at that site, you know, he would get a job. Now, you just heard John say that they can come back the next day. Well, that contractor's out there pouring concrete and he needs to go to work like that. Can't wait for the morning. So I think that's the only that's the other reason that we need somebody on those job sites to where they can make that commitment and hire that person today, not tomorrow, because he's got fifty yards of concrete to pour. He needs five guys now, not tomorrow. You know, those are those are things so, that are important because I think we're missing out on some people that, that could go to work. So someone almost to work with the general the G C or whoever's doing the, the superintendent that does planning on what the next upcoming employment would be and stuff and line them all out with the, in coordination with the job bank and such. Mr. Obracker. What, what I, uh, I have to meet with Cheryl, who's up in Katusa, again in Katusa right now. Uh, she is going, I'm going to walk her through the process of how we're actually going to take employees to Flint Co. to help them find jobs. Uh, normally we get two or three days notice and we start looking for people who, who want to go to work. Uh, most of the time, the jobs are, they don't call us that day and say, hey, I need somebody here the next day. Mostly it's, look, we're going to be pouring concrete, we're going to be doing this, and we'll, in the next week we'll be looking we'll be looking for these type of people. Do you have any? And then we send those people up there. So Cheryl and I are going to get together, and she's going to help us to locate jobs for these people as they come into her office as well. But she won't be the person that will actually be over there in the 
trainer because she's up there to do applications for vocational training and other services too. She can't do all of it. Yeah, and, and that's just important though, to having somebody on the construction side. That's, I mean, that's the big thing. That's where you're going to get the most out of your guts. Okay, and, and Diane, you, you report back through to the chief. So is this something that's within your power to do or do, is this something you can do or will do? Because uh, I'm here in the committee. I don't have a problem with it. I just didn't ask for the monies. And the reason I didn't ask for the monies is because I know the budgets are pretty tight. I know that this is a, from my perspective, of having talked to everybody on this committee, it's a priority. And I think, I mean, we could have a show of hands, um, but that's not an issue for us. We, I mean, this is, jobs is the basis for everything else it besides education. It might be that you want to look at doing a contract with someone because when that project's finished, will there be another project? We don't know. It could be over in Nowater, it could be in Bartlesville, it could be at Dewey, it could be down here at uh, uh, Rowland, or it could be at Salisaw. I mean, it moves around, and so if you looked at having someone that was from that area that was going to be there at Catoosa or someone that was going to be at West Salem Springs, uh, when those projects are finished, then you got to find other jobs for them to do. So. Okay, since we don't have the attorney here, I don't have somebody for advice on legislation, but um, there was a considerable amount of money in the budget that was from the fees collected. And I don't know what it would take to amend, and we're on a time frame here because we only have like a three to six month window for these big projects, and that could mean a considerable amount of money for our Cherokee families and other Indian families in the 14 counties. So I would like you, I think from this body, and I don't know if we need a motion, and then we'll get the rest straightened up after this and try to keep it moving by next month and to full council next month. But take that money and whatever legislative changes need to be made to contract out, to have folks on site at all these major projects to make sure that either people are getting employed or trained to be employed immediately. Right? So do I hear a motion to that effect? I'll make that motion. In fact, uh, Madam Speaker, that, that's, that's where I was going with my hand up was to revisit that legislation to to amend it uh, to where the training dollars for whatever we done before could be utilized to do what Harley's talking about. Okay, so I hear the motion uh, from Councilman Crittenden. Do I hear a second? No, sir. Councilman Snell. Um, are all minds clear? And then we'll get back either, we'll probably at full E and F, I'll report back out or something that, that what we're going to do next. So, um, oh, mine's clear, then do I hear all those in favor say aye? Aye. Uh, all those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Um, and Diane, you'll, you'll call me or Jack if there's a question about anything, if something roadblock or speed yeah. bump comes up. Yeah, I will. Because I think we need I don't to foresee that there be any problems. Oh, we need to I turn think, that around. I think the chief is very supportive of you know trying to make sure that we have adequate staff in place, and if that's the wishes of the committee, we can surely do that. I don't know about you know I, I was curious though about whether or not you would actually hire someone, and if you hire someone, then you've got the uh, position in place once the contract construction's done. You know where are you going to move it to? Will they be willing to relocate to that site? Uh, I'm I'm very comfortable, and I don't know the committee, but I assumed in the motion that it was for contract. And then if that works out, and it somehow seems magic, and we got other stuff, if you want to hire them, then we'll figure out the budget after that. So, and yes, Councilman Buzzer. Chair, I agree. You know, Dr. Ms. Kelly said it makes sense to me. If you can find somebody that that would contract those positions up there, that that'd be the way to go. And you never know. You can find some retired engineer, some retired inspector that would certainly. You know, be willing to do that to live in the uh, area up there. So, yeah, I think that'd be what we're Thank you. And if you all have any suggestions or any people that you know of out there that's in that line of work, send them our way. So, along the lines, and I think that has, I think we resolved kind of that portion for now. So, I, another question I had was when you get employees especially within our entities, either the tribe or CNE, CNI, and CB, do you immediately then refer them to the, the group that has the appeals hearings and stuff? 
Do you, do you refer them to that, or what do you do with those when you get the? Uh, it's up to the. It's up to the HR director at each of the different entities. They know that that employee appeals process is in place, and they also know that they can go from there to the JAT. And if they don't tell them that, well, they can call our office and we can tell them what to do. Is that communicated to them in, in writing? It's supposed to be at each HR level. Uh, the HR groups meet uh, every month. Um, Mr. Thomason at CNE. Gary Warnock at CNI, Michael Botello, and I have sat in on their meetings. Uh, it's uh, it's the HR groups that meet, and they're talking about the coordination with the application process. Uh, I know we talked about that. Uh, Councilman Fishinghawk was instrumental in that, uh, whereby Delaware County and Ader County, the system, the computer system, you couldn't actually get on there and get the applications processed within a certain length of time. And they're going back and training all of our staff to help with that. And then we're going to have paper applications so that once somebody comes in, if they can't get in there and use the computer, they can fill it out. And then we, in turn, will fax it or send it in to CNE. And they're working with us in that respect. Uh, the same thing with CNI and the other entities as well. Cherokee Nation, HR2. Okay. So... The point of the discussion was so that we could get somewhere at next meeting with more. We had our questions out on the table about commission, making it an independent commission. So I think these questions are more geared around what is currently being done at Taro. And so we need questions about what we would need to answer to consider making it an independent commission. Yes, Ms. Kelly. What I would suggest is if you're interested in knowing about the uh, employees who work in those different areas. What I would suggest as the uh, chair of the committee uh, contact each of those HR directors and ask them what their uh, policy is and how they're dealing with employees that have to be let go, terminated, whatever, in regards to that process and if that's being explained and if so, at what level. Well, and I think that, that we've reviewed those. I think most people are comfortable with them. I just want to make sure and hear the answer to how, if it comes to you guys, if they don't feel like they're getting answers within their entities, that they would probably end up in your office, and if they're provided what maybe the entity doesn't provide in writing. My question goes back to what Councilman Buzzard kind of asked before, is are they, is the other stuff independent enough on vendor decisions, uh, construction contracts, employment of construction workers, and those kind of things would be my reasoning for right now why we would want to go towards the independent commission. I will, uh, I will follow up with all the different entities and I will get back with you on that. Okay. And, and, I want, and I think we asked earlier for the historical perspective of why it moved from the commission, the legal history from moving from an independent commission to a did anyone else have any questions? Do we have enough to adjourn in the room? Okay. Are we going to adjourn or recess and pick this up at the time? Well, I mean, I, he, I didn't know he was going to be gone. And so, and he doesn't show me that he has anything prepared that we'd requested at the last meeting, so I don't see in recessing for us to come back until we, so he probably won't be a month before he has anything. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.